Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am here today with Allison M. from Wisconsin Music Ventures, and we are going to talk about social media. Um, Allison is... uh, She runs kind of a a membership for musicians and she experiences a lot of musicians and how they are on social media and they have a lot of questions about it. And I have the same thing in my, in my world. And so we thought it would be a great conversation to have about what to do and what not to do as an artist on social media. But before we get into that, I'd love Allison for you to let them know kind of your background in music and um, how you got to where you are now and how you started Wisconsin Music Ventures. Yeah, that's it's a long and winding story, but I'll try and make it short and simple. Uh, I have been a musician, you know, essentially my whole life as uh, a lot of us have been. And uh, I'm more classically trained on French horn and piano. Um, and, uh, and I studied that as a college student and even at a master's level, I did more conducting at the master's level. Um, but, uh, after a little while, um, you know, I really had trouble finding and settling into a one real clear, um, uh, full-time job. And at, at a certain point, I really, uh, I couldn't even see myself doing that. I, I had been trying so many different, um, you know, arts administration kind of work, private teaching and, a little bit of music retail that was my first thing um and uh yeah just like the, the house management of a performing arts center um different fundraising kind of things for arts administration arts administration roles and uh even being the executive director of an orchestra in the area at one point in time and uh, just lots of you know things that all often were part-time part-time salaried um that kind of all totaled up to one career in music and uh, and there was performance on top of that too uh, as a gigging musician usually freelance on horn or piano um and uh yeah it's it's um it's been a very interesting ride and then um i a few years ago maybe four or five years ago i tried to really pursue you know to my horn playing at a higher level uh, i just decided it was time to really focus on that um, but almost immediately after i started investing in that um, just you know personally professionally Financially, um, I really got kind of struck down with a lot of um, uh, medical s- issues uh, that affected my abdominal area. And uh, it, if you know anything about the logistics of how um, wind instruments work and, and get played and, and those performers need their their strong abdominal muscles and, you know, any a part of that body to function properly without pain um, in order to um, play at a high level, much less at all. So. Um, I, I was in and out of the hospital for, for you know, surgeries, m- many of them unexpected um, for about three years. And I just, at a certain point in time, I just couldn't pursue what I wanted to there. And even some of the other part-time work that I was doing really got affected during this time. And uh, so long story short, um, I just realized that I had to do something different with my, uh, my work. And even the stuff that I, um, you know, enjoyed doing at that time um, while I liked it. Um, I was still having to work for other people and that, you know, it was part time. So I didn't have the health, you know, benefits that I needed to really get through some of this time. And um, so if I was going to do anything in music, I needed to kind of do it my own way. And that's why ultimately Wisconsin Music Ventures, um, you know, kind of came came to be. Um, It's it's a and that's a, a concert series built for uh, well, it started off as a pop-up style concert series that was patron supported, putting great mus- Wisconsin musicians in great Wisconsin places. And um, and really, after having listened to all these great podcasts, um, 
I, I'm definitely sure I came across yours along the way. Um, Andrew Hitz is, is, a, is a common friend. I know um, his was a big one that I listened to at that point in time as a brass player. Because, you know, that's how I was introduced to him. Um, you know, I just I was very aware of what other possibilities there could be. And like if you could make a living, if you if you did something totally different yourself. And so um, that's really um, how I just kind of started doing this. And um, I started Wisconsin Music Ventures in 2019 in the summer. Um, and and then, um, as many of us know, all of us know at this point in time, right after that time period is when COVID came around and uh, everything that I had tried to do and thought I was going to do got changed. Um, but for me, it was so early in the process that, um, you know, we just kind of went with, uh, um, you know, rode the wave and saw what was going to happen. And, um, and then, you know, we saw that a lot of musicians could really use a lot of assistance during that time of COVID and uh, we kind of became more of an event based series that also supported uh, musicians along the way too. So in a nutshell, that's kind of uh, Wisconsin Music Ventures right now. So yeah, um, it's good yeah. that you could be nimble at that point and, and, and flexible because wow, like, you know, if you were only based on events, it would be hard at that point. Right. We were so early in the in the game that it was actually the perfect timing because um, because we were locally based events um, and musicians. And so um, even actually the event part helped us out because um, what people could only do during this time is use local musicians and local mm. um, artists for events. So places that haven't been able to use touring acts because oh, touring yeah. went away for so long and is still having a tough time coming back. They need, they want to do something. So we've been able to really, you know, kind of get our foot in the door by being a, a you know, a trusted local uh, organization. And then um, also just, um, we have seen a really good um good response because we can put on events really well um and and there's and staffing at other places has been really hard to find mm -hmm. so we have it's gotten to the point where we actually get hired now by other organizations to put on events um because we have staff and musicians and like it's like a whole package kind of deal it's been really interesting to see like, you know, COVID really shaped exactly what we are now. And if it hadn't happened, I don't know what we'd be doing. So that is interesting. So you built kind of this event machine, and yeah. you know, you had all the, and they're like, oh, oh, why should we try to figure all this out? Cause like you said, they can't get staff and all that. We'll just bring them in and they'll just do the whole thing. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And along the way we did build this musician membership. And so that allowed us to kind of prioritize who we use for the events, um, which was actually kind of hard to do at first because we, you know, we were like, oh, we can use any local musician. That's great. But then everyone, you know, once they find out, oh, you, you know, you work with local artists and uh, you use any genre of music, that's great. Sign me up. And um, then everyone comes out of the woodwork and <laughs> which is a good problem to have. But um, uh, you know, it's, this allows us to really um, work with the people who are part of our organization and, and yeah, it's been a win-win. So, yeah, that's really cool. I love how you guys have supported musicians during the pandemic. So um, with Wisconsin Music Venture, since we're going to talk about um, social media, do you guys use it, social media at all for what you guys do, or are you more locally based? Um, as far as just like promoting, promoting things on social media or finding new members and things like that. Yeah, um, we we have our own social media platforms for sure. Um, they feed into the bottom of our website and uh, which is WisconsinMusicVentures.com. And um, yeah, we use that right away early on. Um, I'm a big social media kind of person for sure. Um, and uh, and e-news, that's a big big thing that I'm a big proponent of as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we try and be really consistent with it. Um, we definitely, um, try and post, you know, every event that has coming along, we, we post, we promote the musicians who are members with us. Um, we promote, we, we put up pictures of events that have happened already to show people like, Hey, um, you know, you don't just preview the event. You want to show what it looks like afterward. 
um, to show, you know, have that, that FOMO kind of appeal. Um, mm-hmm. So, that, you know, for future events um, and then to kind of, yeah, entice people who, um, who might not know what we have happening, use that using the hashtags for different cities and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we have a pretty, pretty good system if, if I may say so, but, uh, you know, there's always room to grow. And I know there's, there's, there's more things that we're always working on for sure. Yep. So Mm -hmm. I know recently I listened to a podcast episode that you had about, um, artists and social media. And I, I think, you know, let's start with the, what things do you see that artists are doing on social media that are not necessarily doing anything good for their career or, you know, what, what mistakes are they making in relation to social media? Yeah, I, I love um, the power that social media can have. <laughs> it can be, I mean, it's turned, it's changed everything, you know, for promotion for musicians and it's allowed us to be really, really independent in so many ways. But the, the, th- some of the mistakes that I, I see out there um, that can really um, make or break you if you, if you think about it, and I have seen it actually hurt some people um, you know, number one, I guess, I don't know if these are necessarily going to be in my order of importance, but, um, it's, you know, definitely be careful with opinions out there. Um, because I mean, I, I you can certainly have your opinions and, and write about them, use them in, in your art. Um, but, uh, if you want a broad fan base and, and you want to encourage people to really, um come to your shows buy your merchandise all of that kind of stuff um it's really easy to alienate people and turn people off by just saying the wrong thing um and uh, it's and all they have to do is unfollow you know click unfollow and and then you know you've done that and it's it's really also easy for those people to tell other people hey this this guy isn't you know um this girl is is you know i don't really i don't really trust them yeah i don't think it's worth going to that show um you know that kind of thing so i i think it's you know if you kind of keep the the opinions to your art um that is something we expect um but when it's broadcast more um more focused in the in the comments or in the in the posts really um that's something that we're less inclined to like sometimes and then that also cause fuels other people on the internet to get really out of control sometimes with their comments. And even if you didn't write anything quite as bad as some of these comments, you're the one who started this mm-hmm. conversation um, and, and people will associate one with the other. Um, so if this happens all the time with individual accounts, but it can easily happen and it does easily happen with artist accounts too. So just be a little bit careful with how you're talking about what topics um, and, you know, as, as much as possible, stick with things that are going to be um, safe. And if you see things getting chaotic, um, you know, just pull it, pull it down right away, delete it, um, you know, because it's much better to delete it than to leave things up, um, you know, and for, for to be found later. Um, I mean, you never know who's going to go digging deep to um, try and, I don't know, find something that works against you down the line. So uh, that's a big one. Um, I, I really um, think a lot of artists spend way more time posting selfies and just like, you know, images of themselves over and over uh, and like things of uh, videos of themselves. Um, I especially you know. see this on Instagram. Yes. A yeah. lot of selfies. I... And, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons that, that just bugs me. Sometimes it's kind of like an ego feeder thing. And uh, and yeah, as as artists, we have a right to do that for sure. That's, you know, you, you would expect that you, this is part of our job is to like, you know, be uh, presentable to our public, but also um, it's, I mean, it's do that sometimes sporadically, um, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, it takes so we, we put so much time into the selfies. I mean, I know how much makeup time and you know, how many, uh, some, uh, some musicians are using their stylists, you know, for, for selfies on Instagram. And it's like, uh, take all the time you're putting into the selfie photos and the videos that you're doing. Um, and even some of the music videos in some cases that are only made for social media. Um, it's, it's like the time that you're putting into that, um, which does not have to be nearly as often as it is, 
uh, you know, take that and put it towards something like um, your your online store or, you know, booking more live gigs or, you know, getting more recordings out there in people's hands or your Spotify presence or things that are going to, you know, actually bring in numbers for yourself. Um, because, I, I mean, it's it's fun and it's it's a big ego boost when we get all those likes on Instagram or Facebook or et cetera. Um, now TikTok everywhere, but uh, it's 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 such a time waster and money waster at the same time, you know, one leads to the other. So um, that's and and honestly, the I I hate to say it and, and put it this way, but the people who are doing that kind of stuff, they they really start building like an unnecessary ego. And and then that makes you really less desirable to even want to work with. So it's mm -hmm. just a whole mess of things that I, you know, just stay away from in my mind, or at least manage, you know, control it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and then, well, oh go, what's the next one? Oh, I was just going to say, like, just the time management in general is, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I touched on it in the in that last part, but um, you know, the, the amount of time in your day that you, that we spend on, um, social media is, is it just, I mean, it's, it's unlike anything else. And, um, there are ways that you can use it for good for sure. Um, and I recommend that if you are on social media for that amount of time that you're actually using it to make genuine connections with people to, um, to one-to-one, -to -one, um, you know, message people and say, you know, actually invite them to um to get on your e-newsletter to come to your show to um you know one-to-one -one, like by name say mm -hmm. their name say something you noticed that you liked about their account um that you have in common or that that you'd like to get to know more about them in a real genuine way and um and you know try and get them to just follow you get their friends to follow you things that are going to be um that ultimately will tangibly show up as um ways to uh to bring in more income stream for yourself um but also to build relationships using that social media those are great uses for for the accounts as opposed to um i, don't, I have a little bit of a vendetta here but the selfie all the time <laughs> so, <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, I love using the um, the voice message in DMs to really connect mm -hmm. with people in a very personalized way. That's it. Yeah, and that's a great suggestion too. The voice message messages are awesome, and they're they're very um, simple and and you know time effective. So, and I like them because you don't have to be all like makeup and hair and all that to respond yes. to somebody, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to go back to what you were saying about the opinions, because I do think that we as artists, like we should stand for something and we have, you know, we often have like certain beliefs that we have, or we have um, certain causes that we are passionate about. Like, where is that line between being your authentic self and, and, and really talking about the things that you care about? versus getting into that like opinion sword fight with someone <laughs> yeah yeah i would say you know and i i probably should have rephrased what i said earlier but i think it's fine to be opinionated to a degree especially if you do have something you're passionate about um you know i'm very much you know vegetarian i you know i have the animal rights kind of thing that i'm very passionate about myself sometimes that comes out in my social media um, you know, there's other things, but, um, but if it gets to the point where you are getting a little bit vindictive about it, you're telling people what to do, um, you know, and, and that as soon as you get to the point where you're directing people in a way where, um, you just feel that sort of negative energy around it, that's when things are going the wrong direction. And then that fuels other you know, instigators on these accounts um, and things could go the wrong way. And uh, and then also just be prepared, I would say, for um, if you do take a stance on one thing or the other and you do relay that in your social media, um, you know, you may very well um, alienate some parts of your audience, um, some people that might feel strongly the other way. So if you, you know, decide to post something about 
I don't, you know, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement is, was a big one, of course, and still is. Um, some people feel, feel very strongly otherwise about that. And uh, if you haven't posted about that at all, and all of a sudden you do, and then you lose some followers, that, you know, shouldn't be a surprise. So, um, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> I guess I'm putting my own opinion in here. <laughs> right now, but, but I think you know where I'm going with that. So, yes. um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So just just be prepared for uh, what may happen. And, and again, I be prepared to take things down uh, if you see things uh, getting out of hand, because the last thing you want to do is just be associated with um, an out of control topic or post. And then what happens is people will screenshot things mm. um, and before you have a chance to pull things down. So, um, you know, that's why I think it's really just honestly in everyone's best interest to not um, take a real hard and fast like political or you know other i you know other sort of controversial stance um on a particular thing because again even if you don't mean very much um negativity by it and, and you you don't intend for that it can often easily get turned that way and then your account will be the one associated so that's right you you become this lightning rod and you didn't even intend for this to happen but like a bunch of other people start yelling at each other in your comments and being mm -hmm. rude to each other and like you don't want to be the person that started that <laughs> yeah yeah and then what happens like who even knows anymore would like facebook shut down your account for that if right, it gets maybe. totally out of hand who knows <laughs> True. I mean, it can get crazy sometimes. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely taking it a little bit like, you know, probably to the extreme, but, uh, but, but then again, I, I've seen, I'm, we have, there's, you know, there's a, there's a radio station in our area here that has gone through a lot lately because they've had some real problems with maintaining, um, you know, there was a big controversy with something similar here recently. Mm. And, uh, so it is definitely possible to happen. So, um, yeah, just, just be, you know, I would, I am a big proponent of just giving a, a nice healthy pause before you post anything, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, if, if at all possible, I really think about that maybe even, um, type it up and maybe send it to a friend and, and say, Hey, is this, uh, something I should be talking about? Uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, or send it to yourself and then check it the next day and see if uh if you really want to post that yeah that's and, a good one sleep on yeah. it look at it in the morning like yeah oh, yeah maybe. yeah maybe not <laughs> well let's talk about social media for promotion because i mean like as artists the point of social media is not just to get likes and just to you know get follows and all of that stuff ultimately we want them to come to our shows we want them to buy our merch how do you think are the best ways to use social media for that? And where do you think artists are going wrong in that area? Yeah, I would love to see um, more authentic posts on social media um, and more people using social media for the, I mean, the hashtags I think are super valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, Instagram is great for that. I mean, really, every every platform has that available. Um, I think, and, and just seeing people respond authentically to comments, um, engagement with your audience, with people who really want to connect with you, that can go such a long way. Um, and if you can do that more than just kind of posting something and then just seeing what happens, but actually having a conversation with people on your account, um, considering it kind of like a community, um, you know, that can really help build your following. Um, and, and if you are working towards building, uh, you know, getting ticket sales for an event that can really, um, get people's attention with regards to that event. Um, I, I love seeing, um, engaged musicians on their accounts. Um, and I love getting that engagement too. If I'm commenting on their accounts, um, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, someone heard me, someone saw me. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's everyone notices those things. And, and those are the musicians who I remember then too, because they took the time to acknowledge me, to, to say something in return and to say, not just to say something in return, but to say something constructive in return. 
Um, so I think that's a really great way to use social media um, that is often uh, missed. And, um, and then also just the direct messages. Um, some people are really good about this. Uh, some people you can tell are automated mm -hmm. about this. But and so I be careful with how you come off on social media with when you are direct messaging, because it is very easy to tell who is doing automated responses or copying and pasting. But if again, if you come off as authentically asking someone or, you know, thanking them to, for following you, um, I'm, you know, I always appreciate every new person who follows me and I want to get to know them. Um, I, you know, I'd love to learn more about who your favorite artists are and um you know is there would you consider following me here or um can I, would you consider signing up for my e-news list and just dropping your link to the e-news page or something like that um it's something where that encourages again a next step conversation um a response you may not always get it uh you may not always get that click to sign up for e-news but at least you've tried and you've uh ideally used their name in the messages uh, back and forth with them, so that um, again it just comes off as uh, not again not another copy and paste move, mm -hmm. and uh, and you are um, just seeming like you do really care, and and hopefully you do, and <laughs> um, and and that's what people really will respond to, and uh, again your your following will grow probably tenfold if you can do things like this because um, the first person will notice the they um if if they are the type of person who notices and likes your music they probably have friends that do and mm -hmm. they will one way or the other probably attract their friends whether it's through the you know instagram how they're the data um you know how they're driven to uh get more followers to to follow oh, your right own. like uh they recommend yeah yeah uh, yeah either that way or just from literally re recommending their friends right yeah yeah yeah, I mean, and I think that's really the first step, right, to getting getting people to actually respond to our eventual, like, harder promotions of things, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to feel like we actually care about them, that we see them, that it matters to us that they exist on, on our account, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then when we actually do the promotion, they're going to be more likely to see it and pay attention because, as you said, they feel seen and heard and all of that stuff. And that like, they, they actually matter. Um, when we get to the actual promotion part, do you have any recommendations on the best ways to promote upcoming events? Yeah. Yeah. Again, based on what I've seen from some artists is, um, definitely make sure you're using different images for each event. Um, I've seen some artists who use the same bio photo for everything. Ugh. And that, <laughs> that makes, uh, first of all, it makes, it makes your grid look weird because it's just, it the does. Photo, it does. Right? Yeah. And, um, I understand that there's something about, you know, keep, capturing a brand and everything you want to keep your brand consistent, but if it's the same image every single time, um, it doesn't look interesting and it doesn't look like it's a new event and it doesn't look, um, like something, you know, people are just going to get used to seeing that and kind of bored with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely make sure that you're changing the event images because some of, I mean, Instagram especially makes it really fun to um, play around with photos. So, um, so definitely change around the artwork and get really great artwork um, if at all possible. Um, and, and just, so I'm sorry, did you ask about event promotion? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, I mean, making sure that you are uh, whatever platform you prefer to drive people from for events. Um, I would definitely post uh, regularly and um, kind of go back and repost and um, and then personally, I mean, so this is a, something that kind of uh, I get asked about a lot or I, I see a lot is like musicians will set up the, the Facebook invite and then they'll say, oh, you know, not a lot of people are really um, you know, liking this or showing interest. And I'll say like, well, I mean, have you specifically invited people to the event or, you know, can you, can you send the URL specifically to people? Um, I've, I've had a couple of people ask me, even if I can't make the event, can I just like, like it to get the, um, you know, the, the Facebook love going or, right. the, you know, um, the, the Facebook juice flowing. 
Um, so it's, I think that's a really good way to go. Um, if you're seeing that it's not getting a lot of, uh, momentum, uh, and not a lot of likes, uh, or in, um, um, attendees right away, um, uh, ask people, even if they're not going to go to just, uh, either share it or like it or do something, you know, find 10 to 20 people who are willing to do that. Cause they can even will. mark themselves as maybe. And then, oh, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to get people, you know, talking about it. That's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I do. Yeah, I'm glad to do that for people. Um, and, uh, and I think most people would be, especially if you are, if you tell them, like, I understand you may not be able to attend, but if you can just help me with this. Um, yeah, no problem. And, uh, and then just, you know, making sure to, to have your, um, I, I would say be careful about promoting events that you know are going to be really good sellers for you. Um, maybe to back off on some of those, because if you're promoting every event the same way, mm -hmm. then when it comes time to really need to promote something that you know you're going to need people at. Um, like then, a release party or something. Yes. yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Then. Um, I mean, there's some things you just need to pull out all the stops for and uh, some things, you know, you don't. Um, so be careful about over inviting and things like that when you really don't need to. That's right, so because that, they will get Facebook blindness or Instagram. Mm -hmm. blindness. Exactly, it. exactly. And it's it's the same thing with, you know, even just the posting in general on social media. Like that's that's again back to my like my selfie issue. But <laughs> it's like there's only so many selfies you really want to see and then other you know people stop wanting to pay attention to that account because it's the same thing over and over again and um, honestly and, like in my opinion that has nothing to do with your music so why would i want to see it you know if exactly. i'm following you for your music exactly yes we want to hear you know what, what's the inspiration behind your new track mm -hmm. we don't want to see more of your dog i'm sorry <laughs> Okay, maybe we do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. sprinkle it in, but yeah, it's all it's all about balance. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly, exactly. So so yes, you don't want you want it to seem like an anomaly when you do have that, you know, dog selfie pic. So <laughs> right, right, right. And you'll get a lot of likes because you don't post that very often. Exactly. Totally. Exactly. Now you mentioned e-news and I'm assuming like in my world, I would call that like your subscriber newsletter or your subscriber, mm -hmm. you know, email subscribers. That's what you're referring to, right? Right. Do you have any recommendations um, on number one, like, do you recommend offering something to get people on the list, something exclusive that makes them want to join? And how can we get people from social media besides just directly dming them like we did mention like how can we get them over there to join our newsletter yeah um you know what i had a couple musicians i'm aware of uh involved with us actually who have tried uh just putting out there on their um on social media on like their birthday or something hey you know hey it's my birthday and like even better than donating towards this charity can you just like sign up to oh, join my e news list that's a great and idea. they've got a really great response on that actually um so because people are willing to do something nice for you on your birthday why not mm -hmm. um so that's a that's something that i didn't think of that but i i really like it um and as far as getting people to sign up at at um for e-news you know if I've seen it work best for us at events on site. Um, people really, especially if you see people who are really engaged with what you're, what you're doing, yeah. um, they want to know more and learn more. And and those are the people to like, you know, in between your songs, just like go out there and, and, and capture that. Um, so that's, that's really valuable. Um, and then of course, just having it available on your website. But um, yeah, I, and then offering, offering something different. I think that's the, the important part offering, something different in your e-newsletter than what you already have available on social media, um, whether it's like a preview of an upcoming release or a discount on merch, if you have a coupon that you can get out there or something, uh, maybe a special video that you put together just for them uh, and that, um, that no one else is going to be able to see unless they're on your e-news list. And then you can even talk about it in your social media, say, mm -hmm. hey, um, you know, coming out, 
tomorrow is a you know a special video just for my e news following or whatever you want to call that following um you know make sure you're on the list so that you are, are you are in the know uh, something like that and then that can be a way to get more signups too there's there's a lot of different ways um but those are the ones i can think of off the, off the top of my head no i love that idea and and like you said ta- teasing it on social media and yeah. giving them that fomo like uh oh mm-hmm. if i don't join i'm not going to get to see this yeah exactly and you can do that with so many different things whether it's a video or merch or um yeah other things yeah people don't like to miss out (laughs) that's true they really don't but i do i i agree with you for me the the best way to get people on your email list is to do it at, at shows because they are like immersed in the experience they're so excited they're enjoying themselves you know they want to give back to you whether they, you know, some of them maybe aren't able to buy merch, but they still want to give back and yes, give yeah. back by joining your email list. Some of them can do all the above because they just love it so much. Um, and, you know, get, like you said, be your own ambassador or get an ambassador for you to go around and encourage people to sign up for your email newsletter when you're in, in, you know, at a gig. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I, I actually you can definitely have someone do that for you but i've seen some of the artists that we work with and um there's this one carmen nickerson um i love her she's just adorable she actually she's a this a singer with willie porter i don't know if you've heard of that band uh, or that musician but he's he's a big deal in in wisconsin um but she does her own solo singer songwriter kind of stuff and uh she just she's she kind of comes off as shy when she does it but she will go around asking people herself, you know, if they could sign up for her e-newsletter and, um, and people love her because she's just the most adorable personality and she gets everyone that she asks to do it. And I think it's, it's partially because they just can't not like her, but, um, but also like people want to talk to the artist and, and they feel really special when you go up to them. Uh, go out of your way to say hi to them. And, uh, and yes, they will, they will want to be in the know. And then yes, they, because you went up to them just to talk with them for that brief moment in time, they will very likely want to come up to come to your next show. So. Um, yep. And nice. I mean, it's, it's all true that like, they'll want to join because they love the show and that the artists talk to them. And, but also like, if someone's in your face saying, would you join my yeah. letter? Like how many people are going to say no? That's exactly. Totally right. yeah, that's fine. They can unsubscribe later if they didn't oh, really yeah, want to exactly. join, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it's okay. If we get unsubscriptions, it's totally fine. Yep. You know, it happens. Um, but, uh, but the more, I mean, personable, you can, you know, uh, present it in the first place, the, the less likely that will be. Yeah. Yep. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is like how to kind of curb the time that you spend on social media because we do want to be interacting with other people and other accounts and we have to keep up with our own account and we have to come up with what to post and all of that. Do you have any kind of um, regimen or you know, way that you organize what you're doing on social media to make sure that you're not spending all day on there? Yeah. Um, me personally, <laughs> I, I've, cause or I have you recommend to, music, to other musicians. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, absolutely. The things that I've learned to do, because I, I was definitely one who was spending all day and every day on it for a while. Um, I, I use the timer on your iPhone, mm. um, but um, there's an app where you can set your um, your social media settings to turn off um, ah. after a certain number of minutes. You can set that. You can do that with any app on your phone. Um, so I just can't think of the name all of a sudden. Um, and uh, also, um, I, I mean, personally, I've taken social media off of my phone completely, but that's a little bit ex- extreme. But that's just because, um, I mean, I found myself just even even with that, um, I mean, you can bypass it. You can say, because it, it says like, do you really want to, you know, <laughs> uh, close out, you know, Instagram right now? And you can say, no, uh, check back in 15 minutes. And, <laughs> um, and, you know, so I, I I was just still breaking my own rules there. But uh, so I went so far as taking it off my phone and just only, you know, I can still p- take pictures and then post them later from my computer. 
Um, and, and that's actually been work, working really well for me. Um, and then also, um, I have cake since we're on video. I have these little timers um, that are like, um, you know, you just flip it over and it and and you set it for like 20 minutes. And that's how much time I'm going to allow myself right now mm -hmm. on my computer for social media. Um, and it's amazing how much more effective you can be when you have a time limit for yourself. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, the reason we get so lost in, on social media is because we don't have boundaries around it. And if we put something there that is telling us, okay, this is our time limit, uh, odds are we're going to accomplish what we really need to, and then uh, we can we can move away if we want to after that. So, uh, yep. What is that? My... Is it Parkinson's law where like you fit what you need to do into the time that you're allowed? So, you know, you might take an hour to do your social media, but if you only had 20 minutes, you could, you'll get it done in 20 minutes, right? Yeah, exactly. I know it's, it's amazing. It's just these little psychological games that we, can mm -hmm. play. That we have to play with ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. So, so yeah. And, and you don't have to, and you know, post everything as it happens either. Um, that's one other piece of advice I would give is, um, you know, I think we lose a lot with the people we love because we're so obsessed with social media. We mm -hmm. we need to post everything immediately. We have to take a video of like the craziest things as it's happening and then post it right away. Otherwise, why, you know, I don't know, something crazy. I don't, what is really gonna happen if you don't post it um, immediately? Uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> So, um, you know, just from your own, you know, relationships and, uh, you know, peace of mind in general, uh, your own um, self care, just, you know, save time for social media and, and use that time only for posting and, you know, let, you know, take pictures and videos as things happen, but then don't post them right. until right. It's, it's social media time. Yeah. Um, I like that. And it will also, you know, you'll have this bank of stuff. So you're not, mm -hmm. like, you know, what am I going to post today? You mm -hmm. know, you've got a nice backlog. Yeah, of things yes. That is the um, side benefit to that. Yeah, yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been a really great conversation. Can you let uh, our listeners know how they can find you on social media and also how to find your website? Yeah, yeah. The best way is just everything Wisconsin Music Ventures um, flows into WisconsinMusicVentures.com. So um, it's all spelled out. Wisconsin Music Ventures, pretty, pretty simple to spell usually. Um, and our, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter feeds into the bottom of that. But I think it's all typically WI Music Ventures uh, for the screen name. So um, yeah, that would be best. And um, Allison M on LinkedIn and Facebook, A-L-L-I-S-O-N. E M M, and that is how you can find me there. Um, and we have our own podcast too that's associated with uh, Wisconsin Music Venture called the Musicians that's Venture. But that is that's right, and I've been on that podcast. You have, yeah, and it was wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, highly recommend that. And what's the name yeah. of the podcast? The Musicians Venture. So the musicians it's all kind of tied together. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys check that out. Connect with her on social media uh, if you're in Wisconsin. So let me cover that real quick. Do, do you have to be in Wisconsin to get involved with Wisconsin Music Ventures? No, we have. We're starting to play around with uh, non-Wisconsinites. And so, <laughs> I know. And uh, I mean, because we do a lot of just like community kind of stuff where, um, and all of our community events are online. So you don't have to physically be there for, you know, workshops and uh, online networking kind of stuff that we do. And industry talk stuff you've been on one of those too um so i mean if you are cool with you know just mostly doing that part the in-person stuff is like the events that we do um and but some people we actually had a musician from new york join and she just she came out here last summer and tried it out and we got her a couple of gigs here in wisconsin so cool. um, yeah so we are trying new things all the time with not just people from Wisconsin. <laughs> That's great. So any of you guys, you can go to WisconsinMusicVentures.com and check out what they're doing over there. If you want to tour to Wisconsin, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great connection hey. for you. So thank you so much, Allison. This has been You're a really welcome. great conversation. Thank you, Bree. 
thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.